Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series about the history of werewolves. In Part 1, Realms of Spirits and Gods, we will talk about the Greco-Roman roots of European wolf lore. Cultures from across the world tell campfire tales of were-creatures, mythologizing local apex predators as supernatural monsters. Asia has were-tigers and were-foxes. Africa has were-hippos, were-crocodiles, and were-hyenas. South America has were-jaguars, and indigenous Americans believe in the skinwalkers. Of course, European cultures have mythology apologized the wolf. Werewolves are, according to some legends, people who morph into vicious, powerful wolves. Others are a mutant combination of human and wolf, yet all are bloodthirsty beasts who slaughter people and animals. Early tribal societies often practiced totemic religions centered on the belief that spirits and gods inhabited the natural world. As such, warriors wore the pelts of powerful predators like wolves in the belief that the animal's spirit would gift them their strength and ferocity. Other cultures wore iconography inspired by wolves. Even cave paintings depict half-human, half-stag creatures. The oldest instance of a man turning into a wolf appears in humanity's first written story, The Epic of Gilgamesh. In the story, the goddess Ishtar transformed an unwanted suitor, a shepherd, into a wolf. When he attempted to return to his flock, the hounds he trained to protect his sheep tore him to pieces. Centuries later, Greek mythology handed down the story of Lycaon, the king of Arcadia. In this story, told in Ovid's Metamorphosis, Zeus tested humanity by walking through Arcadia disguised as a mortal man. He hoped to see if anyone would recognize his divinity. Most of the people saw Zeus for who he was and wisely fell to their knees and worshipped him. However, King Lycaon designed a divinity test. Lycaon cut the throat of a prisoner, boiled and roasted his limbs, then served them to Zeus, disguised as a regular meal. The king believed that only the king of the gods would recognize the ruse. To the ancient Greeks, cannibalism was the worst of all crimes, practiced by only the most savage barbarians. Of course, Zeus, the king of the Greek gods, recognized the ruse, overturned the table with a blast of lightning, and Lycaon fled into the fields. Zeus turned his clothes into fur and his arms into legs, thus Lycaon could pursue his hunger for man flesh in a more suitable form. And from the name of King Lycaon, we get our word lycanthropy, which means transforming into a werewolf. It is important to remember that the Greeks did not see lycanthropy and other supernatural events as a mere campfire tale, but reality. They believed lycanthropes represented parts of the human mind opposed to the civilization they created and cherished. Herodotus, revered as the father of history, recorded a tale of a nation called the Numerians. He wrote, each Numerian, once a year, transforms himself into the form of a wolf, and he continues in that form for several days. After that, he returns to his former shape. Wolves play an important role in Roman myth as well. According to Rome's founding myth, Amulius, the king of Alba Longa, ordered the death of the twin infant boys Romulus and Remus by throwing them into the Tiber River. The river god Tiberius calmed the water and their basket caught in the roots of a fig tree at the base of the Palatine Hill, where the twins would one day found Rome. A she-wolf discovered the twins and suckled them. Later, a shepherd and his wife, Faustulus and Acca Laurentia, discovered and adopted the twins. After they grew to manhood, they would found the city of Rome. This famous myth is depicted in countless pieces of Roman art and has parallels in ancient and modern lore, which tells of human children raised by wolves. Throughout the Roman period, the wolf symbolized Roman power. Some believers even considered the wolf 
believed to be sacred to Mars, the god of war, and one of the three original gods worshipped by the Romans, their so-called Capitoline Triad. Some Italian city-states even prohibited the killing of wolves and told of the gods inflicting death and madness upon those who dared to pursue them. A Roman satirist named Petronius wrote of a man who, on a night lit by a full moon, visited his mistress. He asked a soldier friend to accompany him. Suddenly, during their walk, the soldier friend removed his clothes, turned into a wolf, and loped into the darkness. The story likely stemmed from the Roman belief that lunar cycles caused madness and sometimes transformation. Upon arriving at his mistress's house, the hero learned that a wolf attacked his mistress, but a slave defended her with a sword. The next day, he learned that his soldier friend died in his barracks of a sword wound to the neck. For hundreds of years, such stories endured throughout the Roman world. Of course, the Germanic nations, which invaded and overthrew the Roman state centuries later, also believed in such tales. In German lore, some people chose to transform themselves into werewolves to obtain power. They did so by wearing enchanted belts made from wolf skin. As wolves, they roamed around at night, attacking their enemies or their enemies' cattle. Farmers could thwart these mischievous werewolves by throwing pieces of shiny steel over the wolf, which caused their belts to temporarily lose their power. One story told of a farmer doing this to a werewolf, and to his shock, saw a respected woman from his village now standing unclothed before him. She begged him for mercy and asked him to keep her secret. He promised that he would, but word eventually got out, and both were exiled from the village as punishment for their transgression. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe, and if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.